Our guest is Dr. John Henry Clark, professor of African world history at Hunter College. Dr. Clark spoke at the University of Texas at Austin in November 1973 under the auspices of the university's African and Afro-American Research Institute. Dr. Clark is introduced by Dr. John Warfield, associate professor and director of the institute. In the annals of all people, we find certain men and women who've been willing to stand any appreciable distance from the herd in order to speak the truth to their own people and to the world. And they have often done that against great obstacles and great adversity. And we're privileged today on this campus to have with us one of those people who's been willing at who has been willing at times when it was unpopular to speak the truth regarding the civilization of man. And within that effort to place African people in the proper perspective as we look at that civilization in history. Dr. John Henry Clark, who is the professor of African world history at Hunter College, has been the associate editor of Freedom Ways quarterly journal produced to speak to the question of black people in the world. And just recently, including a three year distinguished visiting professor at Cornell University. He's been around among the folk, probably one of the most renowned teachers in the country, publishing many books, his most recent one, Slavery and Slave Trade with Vincent Harding. And we're very much pleased to have him here today. It is at this point I'd like to present to you our colleague, our brother, Dr. John Henry Clark. I want to thank Ms. Professor Wallfield for the invitation. Um, and what I'm going to be talking about is Africa and the New World, uh, new dimensions in, in African history, which is, means a new way of looking at Afro-American history. That means that I will be moving very rapidly over a large body of information, uh, the kind of information that you need to devote a whole semester to. I think I'll begin by questioning the title of my lecture. What do you mean by New World? in as much as the new information on the pre-Columbian presence of the African in the New World tends to prove that there were Africans in this side of the world in South America and um, the West Indies, but particularly in the West Indies and parts of South America as early as 500 BC. And the reading of Christopher Columbus's diary will prove that uh, according to his own accounts, and he was no friend of the blacks, that he found Africans in the New World doing business with Indians and using minted West African coin. And that when many of the Spanish conquistadors, especially those who went to the area that is the Panama Canal, they found small black colonies with the Indians in South America. And in a work by um, <coughs> Walter Van Werthner um, dealing with terracotta and sculpture in South and in Central America, he dug up the greatest physical evidence of the presence in the Africans, of Africans in the New World that has so far been, uh, been dug up. And in early works of Carter G. Woodson, and in a three-volume work by Leo Wiener called The African and the Discovery of America, he said, and he pretty much sustained what he said, that the African could have preceded the Indians in this side 
of the world and that a lot that you think of as Indian culture is African culture. He got thrown out of Harvard for writing the book. Now, why did this place Christopher Columbus in context with New World Discovery? And in as much as he discovered a world full of people, then let us assume that the people that he discovered discovered something. And he discovered both Indians and Africans in this um, side of the world. In actuality, when we look at <coughs> this year, 1492, look at its great significance in history. Maybe of all the things that happened in 1492, maybe the least important thing that happened with this bad navigator started out from one side of the world and stumbled up on the other side of the world. Now, it has been proven that the Portuguese had already charted uh, their movement to this side of the world, and they did not confuse the West Indies with the East Indies as Christopher Columbus did most of his life. And one of the main reasons why they did not come ahead of Columbus because they had had it on their charts and they had established priority. They wanted to build those fortresses along the coast of West Africa they were going to use to hold the slaves while the ships come in. They gave that priority to New World Movement. But the Portuguese, who were the master mariners of the day, thanks to the information that filtered into Europe after the Crusades, mostly from, from China, they had no confusion about what this part of the, how to get to this part of the world. All right, now, my point is, had Christopher Columbus not come, Europeans were going to come anyway. Now, there is all the talk about, which is beautiful folklore, about the debate between whether the world was round or flat. These were old wise tales told in Europe that had no great significance. Now, as the Europeans came out of the Crusades, began to recover some of their own strength, began to stir from the lethargy of the Middle Ages, they made a decision, and that decision still holds, and that is, whatsoever the world is in shape, round or flat, we are going to take it. And that is what they did. And they decided that whosoever ruled the world is going to be one of us. And this decision, coming at a time when there were internal differences between the African, African states, and when the pluralistic states in West Africa had not settled their family differences, and when they made the horrible mistake of inviting the first Europeans in to arbitrate family differences, they were in serious trouble because they were making a glaring error, which many African states still made. The African who came to the New World did not yield his African identity. In fact, he began to search for that uh, African identity. And he began in this period of Holocaust and disarray and mixtures of culture, he began to search not only for his identity he, in, the, uh, in this new world, but his identity in the world. And he knew that he had an identity and, uh, and a history that commanded respect. And when blacks began to produce an intellectual class in the Western world, that intellectual class, both in the West Indies and America, began to address itself to the definition of blacks in world history, began to attempt to locate blacks on the map of human geography. And some of the pioneers in this movement were scholars from the, um, from the West Indies. Some, Amer some Afro-Americans gave up the search and adopted the uh, distorted image that was created by, um, by their oppressors. 
But as early as 1881, Edmund Wiltmark Bly.